This is one of the rare pieces that you find that was never meant to be as famous as it has become. Yes, I'm talking about the meditation from the opera Thais by Jules Massenet. And I'm very happy to have finally shared it with you. I've been working on it for about six years, tweaking it here and there. And finally, after a generous donation from one of you guys and a request at the same time, I decided to record it for you and provide you both on MuseScore and on SoundCloud the recordings where you can play along. Particularly on MuseScore, you can download this score I arranged in conjunction with another piano player, and I put it in G major, in Sol majeur, instead of D major. To me, it is much more beautiful on the cello in G major, because D major is what it's written for the violin. And bit of history about this piece, it was never meant to be as famous as it is because Jules Massenet had written this with the intention of sort of a background music. It was written as an interlude. During the interval you have at an opera where you get up, stretch your legs, go get some wine, and do those sort of things. So while everyone is walking around, a singular violin stands up and plays this beautiful piece. Now imagine being there in the opera house and witnessing this moment and having everybody stop and realize that this piece is gorgeous. And over time, that interlude, that interval ceased to become a moment where people stood up and walked off. No, it became a moment where people listened ever more intently. I just think this piece is nothing close but magical. So I'm very happy to have shared it with you. Now, let's jump right into the technique. Here's your music, first part. You're starting here in the upper third position, and you want to remain the fingers down when you slide, when you shift over to the A. You see that? That is me playing the four and the two together. Make sure that you're as smooth as possible during every single legato. Continuing on, we're in the third measure that you're playing and play the harmonic. It's really pretty that way. Everything else is quite self-explanatory on that line. Let us move on to measure 15 for the triplets do this beautiful cascade as they descend down the cello. So let's get into the fingering for that part. You're starting here and you're doing your one on the G sharp. And I think it's very important that you follow the fingering. Two on the E, four on the B, one on the G sharp, sliding up to the harmonic D, putting the second finger down. The reason why you do that, because you want your hand expanded. See, the hand's expanded making this, and then you shift back to the A, and then the E, and then the C natural, that's an expansion. That's in measure 16. Staying there, remaining the finger, four on the B, two, E, slide back, four on the C, one, and then here at the G. I want you to be very aware of how you place that beginning of every single cascade. Don't hit the note. I found when I was recording it, I tended to sort of depress very difficult, very, very hard on that. I don't want you to do that. I want you to be aware of the pressure that you're pushing down and be firm, but don't be, I don't know, don't be rough. And try to enjoy it as much as possible. It is beautiful. Let's move on to the next line. We have this G, D sharp. F, A. That 
it's important that you do that. And I found that it is actually quite clear if you do this. Measure 25 to 26, you have an F sharp, A, C natural. You end that, wherever you end, you end it on the D natural, wherever you are. Play the F sharp with a one. You wanna play like that, because then you're ready to shift into that position. Moving on, we are in measure 30. The best I can suggest you to do is in measure 31, use a harmonic D, and then when you shift back down, when you're doing that, the F natural to D flat to B, I do a one for one because I don't have large hands. I have a square, square hands. And so you may do that with a three, but I find it's better to do the one for one, slide back the one on the A natural than a four two. And then staying in position for the next three notes, the F, D flat, B flat, and then starting up bow. I find it's more important to end that on the A, so I'm talking about measure 38, 39, when you go up the chromatic, D, F sharp, D, D sharp, and then E. I suggest that you really start doing that here on the A, because then you can stay in position. And you're just like you started. Moving on, everything repeats just like the beginning, so if you know the beginning, you know this part right here. Let's move on down to where it changes ever so slightly, and that is in measure 58. <laughs> and then start the end of 65 on a down bow. And then finishing it so beautifully as it finishes. I love this piece and I could play it all day and all night. So I'm gonna stop playing because I haven't played it all day and all night and teach you the beautiful harmony I arranged for you.